Hello and welcome to the Native Pollinators of the Mary uh, video as part of the Blue Banded Bee Sitters Club. My name is Don McKenzie. I'm on the Ecological Restoration Team at Mary Creek Management Committee. Uh, this is a project that's funded through the Moreland Thrive Program in partnership with the Friends of Mary Creek's Community Engagement Subcommittee with Chrissy Charles and Edie Bush and Rachel Solaro from the Newlands and East Coburg Community Houses or NECHI. I'd like to start the video by acknowledging that our project takes place on the lands of the Wurundjeri people who have been custodians of this land for thousands of years and acknowledge and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So this video is uh, number two of two short videos and a webinar which we're delivering on uh, Wednesday 28th of October at 7pm and there'll be a recording of that as well. I encourage anybody to join the webinar where we'll, interview, we'll be interviewing some uh, special guests on the Mary Creek and pollinators, and it's also a great chance to ask any questions about the plants, the pollinators, or the project in general as well. So in this video, we'll go through a brief introduction to native pollinators and their relationship to indigenous plants, some of the more common pollinators that use these plants for food and habitat, and the importance of citizen science and submitting data that can drive management decisions in conservation. So first off, what are pollinators? Well, pollinator is a broad term referring to fauna that pass genetic material, aka pollen, between individual plants. Uh, there can be insects such as flies and bees, birds, or even possums and sugar gliders that are attracted to the flowers. We can even spread pollen unwittingly ourselves on our clothes and oftentimes on our fingers after touching flowers. In order to produce new generations, plants must pass the genetic material across to other individuals. In the case of some plants, such as grasses, they do this via wind pollination, but most plants, or angiosperms, have evolved with many clever rewards. They're commonly food-based, so uh, nectar, scent or odour, or bright colours and shapes. Many plants, including some on the Mary, have evolved to have certain floristic features that attract specific species of insects. So plants and pollinators uh, do have a mutualistic relationship and uh, we'll look here at this uh, great diagram to show the simple process of pollen transfer between flowers. So it's from the stamens which are the male part of the flower or the, to the pistil or the female part of the flower. Pollen is then transferred into the ovaries of the flower and will begin to produce a seed. A fascinating and highly advanced example of this evolution to attract pollinators are drakia or hammer orchids from Western Australia, where the flowers have evolved to have the appearance of the thinid female wasp in addition to producing sexual pheromones. The male wasps attempt to mate with the flower and bounce around, getting stuck with pollen in the process before moving to another flower, repeating the process of trying to mate and therefore transferring the pollen. So as we discussed in the previous video, much of the original extent of bushland on the Mary Creek has been cleared or severely degraded. And a lot of the indigenous plants uh, that we used to have no longer occur in the catchment. Oftentimes we bring in other populations from the nearby Darabin Creek or the Yarra River or the Plenty River. And with no many of these plants no longer present, native pollinated numbers are very low and studies have directly tied populations to the presence of native plants in urban areas. Now it's worth mentioning the role of European honeybees, or by the Latin name Apis mellifera, which is the more common pollinator we see around our suburbs. While they do perform an important ecosystem service for agricultural and garden pollination, research has shown that they're more common in urban residential areas due to a wide variety of non-indigenous plants which favour the bee as a generalist pollinator. Unfortunately, most indigenous pollinators do not access or utilize uh, exotic garden plants. And we also find Asian honeybees and European bumblebees competing with native species and possibly excluding them from floral resources. If we think holistically, we need pollinators to have our indigenous plants spread and at the same time, indigenous plants for food and habitat for our pollinators. This is why promoting and using indigenous plants in our parks, our gardens, and even commercial plantings is so important, along with conserving and restoring what precious few remnants we have left. And now for the fun part. So there are thousands of insect pollinators and many look similar and can be very hard to identify. Uh, most pollinators in the Melbourne area are bees in the order Hymenoptera, 
and flies in the order Diptera. However, we also find beetles, moths, butterflies, and even garden insects like lacewings as pollinators. And we'll now go into some of the insects that you might see around your plants. The first pollinator we'll cover is the hoverfly or surfnae, which are very common and easy to identify with adults featuring bodies around four to 10 millimeters long and yellow to brown and gray stripes on the abdomen and the thorax. Along with feeding on nectar and pollen, they're also beneficial garden insects and the larvae feed on soft aphids. Look out for hoverflies in groups and often going by their namesake by hovering and darting around in front of flowers. Flies utilize flowers for nectar, which is high in sugars, and pollen around mating season, which is high in protein. Flowers also commonly have a higher ambient temperature than the surrounding air, which can greatly increase survival for them in cold weather. Leafcutter bees are from the family Megachillidae and are solitary nesting bees that build nests inside cavities in walls, rocks, and wood. They create individual egg chambers which have pollen, nectar, and saliva for the development of the larvae, which are wrapped in small leaf covers, hence the name. Leafcutter bees are between 6 to 15 millimeters long and have a similar size to honeybees. They will carry pollen on stiff hairs on the underside of the abdomen, which is often very bright. You can identify leafcutter bee markings on leaves by the circular cuttings, as opposed to caterpillars, which are more irregular. If you see a bee carrying a leaf, it's most likely a leafcutter bee. Uh, Homolictus bees are another family of solitary bees. They're often small and below 8 millimeters, with bright, shiny abdomens, which is the rear of the body and thoraxes, or the centre part of the body. Their colours vary from emerald, uh, orange and aqua, and usually have a very metallic appearance. The underside of the abdomen features soft hairs similar to the leafcutter bee that carries pollen, which, which may also be stuck to the rear or the hind legs. Spotting these bees is pretty difficult, but you may be able to do it with a magnifying glass or a really close watch on your flowers. Moss bees are unique small pollinators often mistaken for wasps due to their hairless exterior. Their bodies are usually no longer than 10 millimeters and very dark black with a distinct color marking on the rear of the abdomen. Their short tongues are reliant on native plants for nectar rewards, which they swallow to return to their nests. And they use a, they secrete a cellophane like excretion in the pithy stems and the crevices of wood. A really fascinating species of uh, bee that we find around Melbourne are cuckoo bees, also known as cloak and dagger bees. They're bees in the, th the thyreus group, known for laying eggs in the nests of other bees, including the blue banded bee, teddy bear bees, and also leaf cutter bees. They feature a dark black body with bright colored spots. Uh, be on the lookout for cuckoo bees, which usually mean blue banded bees or other pollinators could be nearby. And now for the namesake of our project and one of the more famous native pollinators, the blue banded bees or Amagilla. They're one of the more distinct bee, native bee species uh, to, in Australia. They're usually around 10 to 15 millimeters long and the distinct bright to blue, uh, dark blue and black stripes on the abdomen are a good spotting characteristic. Blue banded bees are solitary and can be found on warm, calm days, especially in spring with good amounts of habitat plants nearby. The blue banded bee has a unique ability to engage in what's called buzz pollination or sonication, which is where the bee vibrates its wings at a very high frequency, enough for certain flowers to release pollen. Buzz pollinated plants include flowers from the Solanaceae family, so that's uh, tomatoes, chilies, and eggplants, and uh, also includes many native lilies, such as the matted flax lily. Uh, they're great habitat plants for the blue banded bee, so be on the lookout and snap a photo if you see one. We'll now look at iNaturalist, which is a citizen science platform where you can make spotting submissions about fauna and flora that you might see. There are millions of submissions around the world. They range from large mammals such as tigers, all the way to small birds that you can see in your local park. Uh, some of the data on the uh, platform is also used to drive conservation decisions as well. The iNaturalist app is available for both Apple and Android phones and is really easy to use. After signing up and creating an account, you can submit an observation by providing a photo of what you saw. 
the location and date information should autofill. And some people might comment, make corrections, or even use your data for other projects as well. So uh, for the Blue Bounder Bee Sitters Club, we've created a special project section in iNaturalist. So be sure to join when you sign up. And that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, we've briefly gone through a few different types of insect pollinators you'll see around your plants, but there's thousands of native pollinators in Australia, and some of them can be really hard to identify. So don't worry if you can't get an exact species. Taking a photo in as much detail as possible can help, and getting in touch via our Instagram or the email is a great way to share and learn. Be sure to check out the Friends of Mary Creek website for future events on the creek, and thanks so much for watching.